Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to build a self-driving car with lane detection using Raspberry Pi. We will first briefly look into the hardware side and then write the code step by step with detailed explanation. We will write the code on a desktop rather than Raspberry Pi and later on we will add it to our Pi. This means that even if you don't have the car ready, you can still follow along to learn the lane detection part. I upload videos on a weekly basis so don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you'd like to see future videos. So let's get started. So before we begin with the software part, let's have a look at the hardware. So the hardware I have covered in one of the previous videos where I went step by step on how to assemble and how to build the complete robot. Now the idea here is that we have a Raspberry Pi 4 and then we have four motors that are connected to an edge bridge and we have two batteries. One battery is for uh, which is basically the power bank is for the Raspberry Pi and the second one is for the motors and it is connected with a switch so that you can turn it on and off independently. And we also have a camera. This camera is standard uh, 1.3 version of Raspberry Pi and we have 3D printed some parts so we can actually tilt it around based on the image that we are getting. So if you want to know more details about how it was built, you can have a look at that video. I will put the link in the description and on the website. So one thing uh, extra that I added was the screen. So here you can see that we have a seven inch screen. Now the reason for this was to make the tuning process a little more easier. So if we are tuning without the screen, it will be hard to see what is happening. And the Wi-Fi, you know, it's never as fast as the actual screen display. So uh, it's not compulsory, but it is a good idea to add the screen. If you have a smaller screen, that will work as well. But the main idea is to get those values that you are basically relying on for example in this case we are relying on the the amount of curve that is present uh, on our path so we are trying to see that and adjust our or tune our values so you need to see those values so as long as you can see it on the screen uh, that should be good to go so let's try to understand the software part here so we are using the concept of modularity now what modularity is that we have separate files for each of the tasks that we want to perform so we have one main module that uh, will handle all these different modules so each file we will call it a different module so if we want to run for example the ps4 controller we will create a module for that and we will connect it to our main module the same way if we want to run the motors we have a motor module the same way we have a lane detection tracking module so all these are separate modules that we can add and remove from our robot so the advantage of this is that the coding becomes very neat and it becomes very strategic where you can add and remove different modules without changing a lot of stuff and what you can do is you can use these modules in different projects without actually changing a lot of code so uh, if I were to build a new robot for example in Jetson Nano I would just uh, use uh, the PS4 module or uh, the lane module directly that I have built before rather than making all new code another concept of the modules is that they can run by themselves uh, if you want to debug or check if they if it's working properly or not and they can also run if called by the main uh, the main module so for today's project we don't have all these modules but what we will be having is our main module that will first of all connect to our webcam module now why do we have a separate module for webcam uh, why don't we just add it in our lane detection well the reason is that uh, later on we might actually add uh, different modules that will need images as well 
For example, we might need a traffic sign module as well to detect different traffic signs. So in that case, that will need the image as well. So if we put image mod, uh, image code in each of the modules, that will be a bad way to do it. So we will have one module to capture the image and then it will send it to the main module. And from there onwards, it will send the images to whichever module requires it. So in this case, it is required by our lane module. So in that we are going to send our image and it will send back us the curve value. So we are simply sending an image. It is doing all the processing by itself and it is sending us the curve value of how much we need to turn in which direction. Now we also have a utilities uh, file that is linked to our lane module. And the reason for this is that we don't want to write all the code in one uh, module if it's too long. So we will write all the supporting functions in the utilities file and then we can relate to that. So once the curve is reached the main module, we can send this curve to our motor module, which will turn the motors based on the speed we have provided and based on the turn that we have provided or we have received from the lane module. So this is the main structure of our code. So before we begin, let me just explain the method that we are going to use today. Now, this is known as pixel summation. Now, the idea is that we are summing up the pixels in each column. So black is basically zero and 255 is white. Now, because we are using 8-bit integers, 8-bit just means 2 to the power of 8. So we have 256 values, which range from 0 to 255. Because it is unsigned, it is 0 to 255. It was, uh, if it was signed, it will be minus 127 to 127. So in this case, we have unsigned integers of 8-bit. So our values are from 0 to 255. So 0 will be black and 255 will be white. Now, in between, we will have different shades of gray. But because this will be a binary image, it will only have black and white. So here we have uh, white as our lane and then black as our background. So here we can see that all the values uh, with white are allocated with 255. So we can sum each pixel. So here we have five of these. So if we add 255, 255, five times, we will get 1275. The same way we will add each column and this will give us the values for each of our columns. Now based on these values, we will do a little bit of maths and we will be able to determine not only whether we have to turn left or right or go straight, but also how much we have to turn left or right. So that is the value of the curve. So as you can see, by simply looking at it, we can see that we have more pixels on the left-hand side than the right-hand side. That's why our curve will be on the left-hand side. But how much that we will determine with a little bit of maths. Now, this is not a complicated process. It is a very simple uh, idea. We are not going to use any fancy algorithms. So it will be easy to follow and we will go step by step and see how we get the output of each step. So even though we will be running our code in Raspberry Pi, we are going to write the code in our PC. And the reason for that is that it makes the coding process much easier and it's much faster to debug. And once we have the module uh, prepared, we can just add in to our existing modules and we can run it. So let's start off by importing our libraries. So as usual, we are going to go to File, Settings, and then we will add our libraries. So here we will write OpenCV, um, OpenCV Python, and we will add NumPy. And as you can see, I've already done that. So I have OpenCV Python and I have NumPy. And these are the latest versions uh, so far. So here you can see that in my directory, I have the lane detection module. And then as we discussed before, we are going to have a a file that will have all the supporting functions in it called the utilities. So we have that as well. So let's import the libraries that we just uh, added. So we will write import CV2 and then we will write import NumPy as NP. 
now we will also import our utilities so we will write utilities and this will import whatever we have in here so so far we don't have anything so now because we are making it a module and we want to run it by itself we will write this condition we will check if we are running by ourselves if this is the main script we are running or it is called by another function so to do that we have to write if name is equals to main then we are going to run the following lines so if we are running our main module we want to run a video for testing so I have the video here video one I will put this on my website so you can use that as well so we are going to write cap is equals to cv2 dot video capture video capture and we are going to write that we want to use video one dot mp4 then we will write while true we are going to get the frames from this video so we can write success and then image is equals to cap dot read and then we can resize our image if required so should we resize i think it's better to resize so image is equals to cv2 dot resize and we are going to use image and then we will resize it to uh, let's resize it to 480 by 240 so this is uh, the size that we'll be using in raspberry pi and that's why we are using this over here then we are going to write um, cv2 dot wait key and we will delay for one millisecond and this is giving an error because i forgot to write an equal to here so let's run this and see if it outputs no but we didn't show anything so we have to write here uh, cv2 dot im show we will write our video and then we will say our image so if we run this and there we have it so this is the video that I have uh, as you can see it's just paper the path is just paper it's a for paper lined up and uh, that is what we will be following uh, and whenever it finishes the video ends up it will give us an error so that is normal don't worry about that we can just clear it out so this is it for today's video uh, in the next part we are going to extract the lane from our image so that we can find the curve value of it now if you like the video give it a thumbs up and i will see you in the next one